that rehosts it on your channel? Yeah. yeah. Slash, yeah, slash, slash all you type in their chat. Yes. Cool, thank you. Although it says it's not working. No. I don't know. Whatever. We tried. <laughs> cool. Um, it is 2.01, so we're going to start right after our Twitch CEOs over here. Figure it out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just doing it. Uh, okay, so hey, everybody. Um, if you don't know me, I, my name is Torian Crawford. I, I am the lead and only 3D animator for Death Battle. I don't know, a little, a little show called Death Battle. A little tiny show called Death Battle. A very small show called Death Battle. Um, and this panel was kind of really put together because um, when I started out animating, I had a crap ton of questions, right? I didn't really have traditional animation education, stuff like that, and I kind of really had to self, have self-taught, and I did went to like a small school, and I always wanted to put together like-minded people and people who also animate and worked in the same industry to maybe be an inspiration and give advice or answer questions that maybe some of you have or that people come up to me and give me all the time, like ask me questions, how do I get started, what software do you use, uh, what, what motivates you and stuff like that. Um, so I think what we're going to do is just kind of really casually go through our lovely panelists here um, and pretty much go through like blank screen to you know, their careers at the point they are now. Like, you know, at one point they sat at a screen and was like, what do I want to do? Or I'm interested in this and how do I do it? And then now they are all super successful and super talented um, people. So let's give a round of applause for our panelists here. Stop it. Um, so I think I'm going to start with something fairly embarrassing for me. Um, this is my very, very first animation, uh, and it's super cute. It's going to be really quick. So cringy. <laughs> Who put me in this animation club? I did not put this music to this video. It just, someone did. Uh, so yeah, he's saying hi, I guess. Oh, oh what is he going to do? Oh, I thought he was going to kill himself. Okay. Um, so, that was the, like the, when I looked at a screen and I looked at someone and I was like, I want to be an animator and that was like the first thing that I did so I'm gonna try to maneuver this extended view this is how I work I have a big monitor like projector on the side of my desk and then I can't see what I'm doing so give me a second here I'm gonna play this one now so that was my first thing right and I read and I practiced and years and years and years and this is what I do now And from animation to rendering to lighting to models to rigging to post to you know pre to writing, I do it all. Um, so like obviously you're all familiar with death battle. This is all primarily death battle stuff. So it's all fighting and killing and more fighting and more killing and more fighting and then more killing. Uh, that's good. I'm gonna just Stop that, please. Oh, sorry. There you go. My bad. There you go. Cool. All right. So that is pretty much what I do. Um, Oh, well, thank you. Um, 
And um, then like 3D, I personally, depending on how you approach it, think 3D, it is tough, but like, like drawing and doing flash animation and digital drawing, stuff like that, I am like, I personally feel like those people are way like talent, more talented than me because it's so creative, right? To just go from blank screen to create like the stories that James make and then the super high fidelity flash animation that these guys make and make your own stories over there uh, that Jason makes and then obviously we have Lee over here with her beautiful flash animations. So we're gonna start with these guys. You know them, Tom and Dom from Flash Gits, Grits. You said that like you don't know us. I do know you. I just don't want to pronounce it wrong. Yeah, Flash Gits. Um, so yeah, you guys take it away. Tell your story. So you you brought up the screen, or you had an idea, or you were super young, or two years ago, and you was like, I want to do blank. How did how do I get there? I think like uh, any young young person uh, back in the day who didn't like going outside, played a lot of video games, right? So I was always really inspired by the kind of cool cutscenes, even though we're talking like, you know, PlayStation 1, terrible eight polygon characters like fighting and stuff. Um, but then I started looking for it online and I found a place called Newgrounds. And I'm sure a lot of you know what Newgrounds is, right? Yeah, yeah? of course. Um, and then I was introduced to dick animations and that just changed everything because that's basically new grounds in a nutshell uh, and then that's where I met Don and take it away yeah. Don. Oh. Um, for me I I don't know if you, any of you guys remember the show home movies back in the day it was like an adult yeah. swim show. Yeah that was awesome. It was, yeah it was Absolutely. great and it was um it was kind of it was like autobiographical of Brendan Small, the guy that made it. He also made Metalocalypse. Many of you guys are probably familiar with that. And I remember watching that as a kid and I just thought it was cool um, because it's about a kid that wants to be like a film director and he like shoots stuff with his camera and stuff. And uh, that kind of became my dream early on. Um, but animation was a solution to do that without having cameras or equipment or always having friends around to shoot stuff because you can basically circumvent not having any kind of budget and just draw whatever you want and make whatever you want to have happen with uh, animation. That's what was always so cool about it, especially with like the community on Newgrounds. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I learned animation as kind of a way to practice visual storytelling before I could make movies. And then I went to college for cinematic arts um, and we sort of started flash gets there just organically and after a point you just take a step back and look at yourself and say like well I've always drawn and this cartoon thing is like what I actually love so just sort of um, naturally transitioned from wanting to make movies and into uh, cartoons I mean that's um, it's sort of it's a lot similar to you know, Monty Ohm's story, uh, the creator from Ru for Ruby, the original creator of Ruby. Right, right. Monty. He passed yeah. away a few years ago. He yeah. wanted to do the exact, he had the exact same situation, right? He wanted to make movies, he wanted to tell stories and stuff like that, but he didn't have a film crew, he didn't really know much about cameras and, and stuff like that, so he went and jumped into 3D where you can kind of produce all that stuff yourself, you know, and then with enough creativity and drive, you can make whatever you want. And it's pretty much the same thing, like you said. I mean, you can just, if you can draw it, if you can imagine it, if you can tell a good story with it, or if you don't want to tell a good story with it, you can pretty much make whatever you want. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, another thing that I like about you guys' work is um, some of it, it's, it's, it's like a mixture between uh, comedy and while also doing like a social commentary, right? So you you have everything from the crazy Mario, uh, car, crazy Mario Kart video, which obviously blew up. But you also have the Transformers, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is a great video. And I started watching it, and I was like, you, know, you look at the thumbnail, and it's like a mega trauma tits, right? So I'm like, of course I'm gonna <laughs> click. I'm gonna click this video. <laughs> um, but then it turned into, uh, but then it became more so that it was definitely a social commentary on just political correctness and stuff like that without really just brutally ripping it apart, but just kind of really giving your opinions on it or, I, you know, I guess what your thoughts on it or like that. So that's, that's what I really liked about a lot of you guys' stuff. So it's pretty cool. Thanks, man. I, th I think we find, um beyond just making a parody of stuff we like, like G1 Transformers or uh, video games and stuff, you can 
and get the clicks. I guess I guess I have to take a step back because with with a cartoon, especially if it's only two guys making it, that's a colossal investment of time. It took like three months to make Transformers, four months. And we had other animators like on it yeah. helping us. We we hired help for that one. But if your if your model is to make cartoons and put them in the void and hope you make money back on it so that you can like eat, you know, and have a roof over mm -hmm. your head, you have to make cartoons if it's gonna take you that long to make them that you know will get a certain number of clicks. So it sort of behooves you to make stuff about pop culture. But we found with um like the satire and the political commentary, we can tell the stories we want to tell and make the comments we want to make with the popular medium that we also love. And that's, that's what was so cool about Transformers. I think that's, we agree that's like our favorite cartoon we've done. Um, but you can take something that everyone wants to see, that everyone knows, like the Transformers, and then have those characters do crazy stuff that's relevant to something else you care about that's kind of outside of that realm, and then you kind of end up with something that's um, really uh, clickable. Yeah, I lost as a clip, but <laughs> no, no, no. I said I definitely clicked on it. So. Yeah, but yeah, that basically sums up in that regard. Um, for anybody who is, because the the cool thing about you guys' flash animation is super detailed, and now that you say that took like three months, it definitely shows. And you say you had a little bit of help and stuff like that. If anybody like, what are some kind of just baseline techniques? <clears throat> that you can kind of give someone who looked at you and was like, man, I want to do that, where should I start, technique-wise? Um, so <clears throat> there's kind of like, with animation, obviously everyone kind of grew up and is used to like the super fluid, like Disney, you know, every frame is this like hand-drawn beauty. I mean, like with us, we can't, you just can't do that. Two-man team, the animations take so long, you've got to basically find shortcuts. So yeah. that's well, where something like tween, tweenimation comes in. You can, if you're someone like Harry Partridge. Well, yeah, you could do a Harry Partridge, yeah. but <laughs> how many people are going to be Harry Partridge? I, I think with us, like, um, the drawing part has always been my favorite part anyway. Like, just making something that looks really cool still, like, not in motion. And that's, that's the beauty of the, um, it's called the tween animation style, is you can make a really detailed puppet. It's basically what it is. It's like a, you know, it's like a thing with parts that you move around like an action figure to make it do stuff. But and then you can spend a whole lot more time on like refining what it actually looks like because you don't have to redraw it a thousand times. Um, and that's kind of uh, what defines our style, I think. But also, uh, that is kind of the same style that you see commercially on TV nowadays anyway. Right. Like, no one's really doing this kind of frame-by-frame -frame beautiful fluidity. Like, if you watch Rick and Morty, there, there is frame-by-frame -frame stuff, obviously, mm. but the vast majority of it is this kind of puppet style. So, like, if you, you know, if you really love that frame-by-frame -frame thing, by all means, but the way the industry seems to be at the moment, I would like put time into learning how to do kind of uh, puppetry based animation. I think a mix is important though. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, a mix, because yeah. all of these things do have frame by frame stuff, but I'm just saying you shouldn't go whole hog like either right. way, I guess you'd kind of really need to learn. And it's the, sa it's the same fundamentals with both styles too. Like I, before I got into twin animation, when I first started out when I was like 14 or something, yeah. um, I did stick figure animation. But to have effective stick figure animation, it's like the same principles. And I'm sure, you, you know, you follow the same stuff. It's, you know, yeah, I mean, bounce and stretch. You know, like yeah. pacing and staggering and all that stuff. It, it translates to any style. Um, so you don't have to jump right into tweening. I guess is what I'm saying. You can start with stick figures, and you'll be learning the same fundamentals to do it effectively that you'll need to know in any case. Cool. Well, speaking of super high fidelity, crazy frame by frame animation, we have James over here um, from the Odd Ones Out. I'm just. And um, thank you. I'm gonna be real honest with you, James. Mm -hmm. um, I did see some of your early comics on Tumblr. I did. Like, I'm sorry. Like right around you, right around when they were coming out, though. So this was, you know, way back when. Oh shoot. And then I picked you back up when the subway, the whole subway video blew subway. up. Um, and then I, you know, watched every video from there. It's mm -hmm. kind of really one of the main things that sits on one of the mini monitors on my face. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, I mean, tell us. 
from blank screen so, to where you are now? What so I was, I was born at a very young age. So. <laughs> well, uh, I, I guess, you know, like with these guys, I didn't like going outside. I, uh, I, I would read a lot of comics growing up, like Garfield and Calvin and Hobbes. And when I was 16, I wanted to start a webcomic, right? I actually, I, I wanted to be a cartoonist. Like that was, can you guys all hear me, by the way? Okay, cool. Uh, like a, a cartoonist, like for me, was the dream job. And for my 16th birthday, I got a drawing tablet. And I just, you know, kept drawing, kept at it, really enjoyed doing it. And I watched a lot of YouTube videos as I was drawing. And I just remember thinking like, hey, I could, I think I could do that. So uh, when I was 18, I uploaded my first video and it was awful. And I, I don't want you guys to watch it. Any, any video from 2014 is just really bad. But uh, I kept kept at it, kept getting better, and then when I was in college, I was in college for being a, a math teacher, not any of the animation stuff, but when I was in college, my YouTube really kicked off, and then I dropped out, and <laughs> then I started doing YouTube full-time, and here I am. So That's pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. I, when I went back and um, just, you know, doing my research and stuff mm -hmm. like that, um, I seen that you got the drawn tablet at age 16, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do think that's great because, you know, it was definitely directly feeding your, like, mm -hmm. your talent or, like, mm -hmm. you know, creatively what you wanted to do, right? Yeah. Because that definitely could have been the thing, like, before then you could have probably been just like, ah, oh, I don't really know where I want to go with this. Mm -hmm. I don't really know if I'm that good. And then you get, even if it's just a piece of equipment or mm -hmm. a book or someone says something to you, mm -hmm. that thing can that just little make push. you go. Yeah. I always I give this advice to other people who are just starting out with drawing. I always say get for your first tablet, get a cheap tablet because you can create professional level art with a cheap tablet. But uh, a cheap tablet will, and when I say cheap, I mean like a hundred dollars. So I don't know what your budget is, but um, <laughs> uh, a, like a cheap tablet can uh, will make you see if this is what you want to do, and you'll if you want to do it, then you can upgrade to a bigger tablet. And yeah. Okay, so um, I, James did give me something to show. Okay, and yeah. We're gonna show just, to show just a tiny bit of it. It's, you it's, want to introduce it's my it? it's my newest video. It's like already out on YouTube. It's like seven minutes long, so we don't we only watch. Yeah, like we're the not first gonna we're minute. not gonna show. And it's about oh. getting recognized of all things. So how fitting. Yeah, uh, it even says RTX on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one to play. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna scooch it. So this bit. is the the frame by frame stuff that all you guys like. <laughs> Like one frame a second. I use <laughs> VLC. Do you? Oh, you might think that since I'm making oh. a part two of this, I must get Wait, recognized a whole so good. lot, like I'm some sort of celebrity or something. Please. No, 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 no. What actually happens is that I'm awkward, and I don't want to speak for everyone, but chances are you're awkward too. So when I do get recognized, we're both being awkward together, and that stuff makes for great videos. Once you get to my level of YouTube fame, whenever I go out in public, I always have a thought in the back of my mind, I wonder if any of these people have seen me pour sprinkles over my shirtless body. I especially get worried when I, I see my that. target demographic in public little boys. This might be paranoia or anxiety, but I swear sometimes little boys will stare at me for an uncomfortable amount of time. And I'm just trying my best not to make eye contact. You know, I don't really have any defining physical characteristics that make me stand out. As of right now, little boys have to look at me and think, is that tall, white, dirty, blonde haired, early 20 year old beta male, that one YouTuber I like, or am I just imagining things? It's funny I call myself the odd ones out when I'm part of like, no minorities. I mean, I might get nervous or around little boys, but when I do get recognized, it's the highlight of my day. So I don't know what I'm worried about. I should just wear a shirt that says, hey, I'm the odd ones out. So one time I went to Walmart and I was buying a bunch of wo Oh yeah, so that's basically what I make. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen it. But yeah. It's pretty good. So again, I've been watching mm -hmm. James and of course these guys, actually most of you. Um, Thank you. Jason's uh, stuff is a little newer to me, which, but I really like it. But most of you, I mean, Lee was doing the five signs that you're watching X movie or doing X thing or whatever. Uh, obviously the racist Mario and then obviously the Tumblr comics, <laughs> which I was going to bring up because they're pretty good. You should like what, what were they? What my, what do you mean? What were they? It was basically like that character you saw just in comics. That's what oh, it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. Um, so there's freaking dinner. Of course, I mean, I was on your videos because I was following that. Oh, stuff. thanks, man. Um, but so technique-wise, obviously you have tons of frames <laughs> of animation yeah, going like on. Three hundred. Um, but um, I think it's very minutes. clever that you have 
maybe just a few frames, yes. but they do such a good job of mm -hmm. expressing the opinions or the emotions you're trying to get out as you're telling your story. Like, can you just so, talk about that technique? Yeah, so that's like, you guys were talking about cutting corners and stuff. I think I probably cut the most corners. It's like a big old circle. But, um, <laughs> uh, so I don't, I don't do uh, lip syncing, which is actually not as hard as it might look. You just need different mouth movements for the different sounds. You guys have probably, you talked about, probably talked to these guys about lip syncing, not me. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I really don't do too much movement. There's some frame by frame, but I don't think you saw any in that clip. But that's yeah, just cutting corners is. It's for. I mean, you um, animated that fidget spinner. That that's well. I mean, I just had a picture, and then <laughs> and then and that that's what tweening is. Is then you just got it to spin and stuff. Do you just, which what software do you animate with? So that's uh, everyone. That's this is a whole other can of worms. So the the animation software that I use isn't really like for animation. I use two programs. I draw everything in Paint Tool Sci, right, and then I save it as a PNG and then slideshow it out in Adobe Premiere, which is like what? super <laughs> low level. I know, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Yo. So I might need to sit back down in the. the side. <laughs> Your profit margin is insane. I know, right? I, I don't really belong up here with these animators or anything, so. No, I, I have a whole, like, $4,000 program just to track my face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a $12,000 freaking room to track my body. Yeah, so. That's, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but no, no, that's pretty impressive. You know, early early Death Battle was made by Ben Singer, who writes a show and obviously is creator of the show. He plays Wiz, and he made the show. And you, you would look at it, and it's Flash, right? And it's and with sprites. But he literally made the first half of the show in M Windows Movie Maker, <laughs> um, and sort of like the same I, method. He would break down the sprites, exactly. and he would just put the sprites along the timeline. And I pulled, I almost pulled my hair out when I even thought about doing that um but that's cool man uh, figure out whatever works for you you know that's really yeah. it's that's, good that's very important like you know it's easy to come up hey what program you use how do i use this program what i tell people is find one that you're super comfortable with get good at it um because they're just tools at the end of the day your creativity is gonna i i promise you your creativity is gonna go wherever you go tools school, job, whatever. You know, as long as you, you and as long as you practice, the program is kind of really the last thing that I would really focus on. Like, I have a cautionary tale about that, though. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just going to drop Don in it. <clears throat> we, uh, we did, we've done flash animation, like, all the time, uh, obviously, since we started. Uh, but the industry standard, like, for 2D, or at least one of the kind of more standards, is Toon Boom. Uh, but after, like... Uh, almost a decade of using Flash. Uh, Don's kind of too old of a dog to learn new tricks. Mm -hmm. So there came a point where it would have been really helpful to know the industry. I say that because Don does all the animation. I shouldn't even be here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I shouldn't be on this panel. But like, uh, Toon Boom became an important thing to have known. Like a couple of times it's come up like we can't work with a certain person because they only use this industry sound software and we don't. So like, if you can find the standard software for the field of animation you want to go in, and you're completely fresh, like I would go with that software. Of course, it changes like yeah. over time. But well, this is a caveat too. Like, it depends on what you want to do as an animator. So yeah. you know, if if you if you want to be an animator on like a team that's making a really big project someday, it's probably best if you haven't started to start now with the industry standards. So you've trained yourself because this software is complicated. It takes a long time to learn, and you want to get ahead of it. Oh. Super complicated. Well, I mean, you, you've made it. You've made it fucking work with uh, Premiere. Like that's that's amazing, man. I'm uh, I'm blown away. So yeah, I, th I think it, it just comes down to what. You, where you see yourself going and what you want to actually do with this stuff. Um, you don't have to learn Toon Boom unless you want to be like a line animator on a huge project working with other people someday. But you can also make your own stuff using whatever software. Yeah, if you want to go the like completely indie route, then yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know Toon Boom, so. Yeah, um, and then on top of that, if some of Toon Boom's uh, features are now implemented and more maybe. Uh, I guess say legacy programs like After Effects and 
other programs like that to where you can do the puppetry and you have all those styles. You can even do 3D in After Effects. Like I met a guy who was working with, he was like, yeah, I do all my animation in After Effects. I was like, you're a 3D animator, what is this? What's happening? <laughs> uh, I can't use this. Um, but yeah, obviously, you know, if you can get your hands on the latest and greatest, which is tough because of money. <laughs> Steal it. <laughs> that, that was not on the stream. Don't, no, just kidding. Um, so, Thief, how about we get to you? No, I'm just um, uh, so Jason, um, your, your cartoon that I've seen on YouTube, it's uh, Sam Sweet Milk. And when I first, Sam Sweet Milk, somebody? One fan. Yes. <laughs> yes. Come see me afterwards. Me and you. Me and you. No, no. Um, and as soon as I seen this cartoon, I was like, Space Dandy. <laughs> you know it's Space We predate Space Dandy, actually. Huh? We predate Space Dandy. We came out. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. So we get um, a lot, but... Uh, <laughs> and, and your animation style is, um, I mean, obviously, besides your animatics, uh, when you have, like, kind of, like, previews of the final with the color and stuff like that, yeah. your style is that, you know, every frame... Uh, super smooth in betweens. So just tell us, you know, about that. Um, well, I mean, I'm a little bit different from everyone else on the panel here because we never really, we were on YouTube, but that was never really the aim. We just wanted to get pitched and picked up and put on, you know, a network or VOD or something like that. Um, but I mean, that's recent. I mean, we just started making stuff because we saw that there was stuff that was being made that was great, but we weren't the ones making it, I suppose. And we just it was stuff that you know you want to see, so you make the thing that you want to see in some ways. Um, which is a really confusing way of putting something very simple. And um, so, I mean, if we're going to talk sort of where we start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like like so, from blank screen to Sam Sweet Milk. Or, yeah, you know. well, we changed the name. It's Starship Goldfish. Now, oh, okay, okay. It's a bit I, less like Jizz and, um, right. and <laughs> sort of more sci-fi. And anyway, so about eight years ago, when I was about 22, um, I was in a bed sit in South London writing a glam rock odyssey. Um, it was like set in 1978, and it was about this glam band who were fighting back the tide of punk by like going this real commercial versus indie route. And uh, anyway, it was a lot of fun until about halfway through when I got bored. And, uh, and I thought, well, I, writing's definitely fun. Um, so I tried to prove to myself that writing was still fun. And so I wrote the most fun thing I could think of, which ended up being the cartoon that I ended up making for the next eight years. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I hired an artist, and we started working together. We put some animatics online. Um, I built a small studio in London by just begging and borrowing for time and space and desks. Um, just kind of, I showed up to like grad screenings and caught people where they were very vulnerable. Like, uh, like you see those, those things of like turtles coming down the beach where they get to the water's edge. I'm like the thing, like grabbing them, just like fistful of business cards. Give me some desks. Kind of, just like, we're going to change the world, don't you worry about it. And then they're like stuck in my house for a year. And, um, and uh, anyway, so we made episode one, and that did, we were on the front page of Reddit, and we, we, um, we, we did well out of that. And so with the Kickstarter from that, it failed twice. Eventually, we made episode two, um, and then episode three we're about to release. So we premiered the, the trailer of it this morning at the cartoon Saturday morning cartoons yeah. thing. Um, so it's uh, a little different because we, we you know we use we used to use TV paint, which is like Photoshop with an add-on basically, and um, and Toon Boom Harmony we use now, but only because we got sponsored. Otherwise, I don't know what God not what we would use. You know, it's premiere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, like, well, to be honest, I mean, we started on side paint tool, and then we just put it in frame by frame to Final Cut Pro, <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and that's sort of where we're at now. Um, we got a cast, so I told uh, the crew that we had a cast, so we, I had a crew, and then I went and told a bunch of actors that I had a crew, so we got a cast. Um, we're just sort of like in a circle. Um, we have uh, Kevin McNally, who's in every Pirates of the Caribbean films. He's uh, with the Mutton Chops. He's Mr. Mm -hmm. Gibbs. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Colin McFarlane plays a villain. He's got a voice that could scare the dark out of an alleyway. He's amazing. He, he, was in all, he was in The Dark Knight and Batman Begins and stuff. And I don't know how I keep tricking people into working with me, but it's going really well so far. So. <laughs> Um, okay, so in, in making, or just, just this property, this cartoon, in making that, did you ever get to a point to where um, you're like, man, because it sounds like you went through a lot, right? And it's starting to pay off, and it's, everything's looking good. Um, was there a point to where you're, you, got to, you were like, mm, 
I don't know if I can or I want to do this anymore. Mm. I'm going to do something else. Or you just got some type of block or demotivation or just... Uh, there was a period where I lived in London and I left London and moved in with my grandmother um, after the first Kickstarter failed. Uh, it, was one of the, it was a period of time where you'd wake up in the morning and be like, oh, why'd I do that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and it took a while to get back to it um, because I think depression and, and you know, the, 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 the troughs are what define the peaks with this kind of creative work. Um, but I think you just have to stick through it. And also there's just something like some sort of, I don't know, I, want, I don't want to call it a need to be loved, but just something that, that, that makes you keep going um, and make the thing so that people, if, not, if, if, not, if it's not that people understand you, it's that maybe you understand yourself a little bit better if there's just something that you can realize if something can if you can get it out of you and if you just keep going because you've tasted it like every, every creative person right. has tasted something like oh okay good I'm, I'm proud of that it's good right. um, now and then like once or three times a, a decade and then the other times less so yeah I think um, an important thing either I mean, personally for me as an artist I mean I started out drawing and showing my pictures to the class and to my parents and to people um, is that it's not necessarily that I wanted people to think my stuff is good. Like, your stuff is awesome, this is great, I love it. It's more so I just wanted to share what made me feel good, which was drawing and creating videos and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. to like people. Like, I just wanted you to see it. Like, I, I just wanted it, hopefully it makes you happy, hopefully you like it. If you hate it, I work on death battle, so it's all hated. Uh, <laughs> um, don't, you, don't you bring that up. Um, and that's, Literally, that's just it. Just from being shorter than this table to where I am now, I just want people to see it. I just want people to kind of hear me, not necessarily just for me, but just to bring something to your life. So I think that's, that's pretty good. And uh, it's looking great. Like, I like it. Animation style is fluid. And uh, last but definitely not least, Miss Lee over there. Yes. Um, Hi. Oh, Jason. It's cool. If you ever watch... You know, how it should have ended. That's where I first came across the uh, uh, five stages of, you know, watching this or, I mean, this and stuff like that. And then, obviously, I subscribed to your channel right there that. And then I seen, like, uh, a bunch of cool things, especially the live action short with the gel character. Oh, really? <laughs> that is probably one wow. of my favorite things that you made. So, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, nice. it's really, it's really good. And uh, it's one of those things that kind of make you smile when you watch it. Um, so, from blank screen to where you that, are. It, I'm just really happy because it's very different from anything I did. So I uploaded it and everyone was like, what is this? <laughs> it's different from no, what you good. do. Um, so but yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I actually came from kind of, uh, I was interested, uh, I, was, I was always interested in art and animation. I actually came from music because I studied, I, I played the violin and I studied uh, music. Um, and at some point I just realized it's, I'm not passionate enough uh, about that. Uh, I joined the army because that's something you do when you live in Israel. I was, yeah, a very brave IT person. And uh, while I was uh, there, um, you know, you kind of get bored because of the overdraft. And I just uh, drew a lot. And I realized this is something I'm very interested in. And um, once you get out, you kind of think, okay, I need, to, I need to join college now. What shall I study? And I was very interested in, in art and in drawing. I, was very, I really wanted to make movies. I really wanted to make music. I really wanted to make a lot of things, which I thought is a problem because I couldn't really uh, decide on one specific you know, root of what I really want to do. Uh, and then I read a curriculum of animation studies, and it really wrapped everything I wanted to do. There was sound design, there was sketching, there was actually study animation. And I was very excited that um, I could be my own kind of studio of doing a lot of different fun stuff. Uh, so I studied that. Uh, you know, you, you, you kind of have, um, I think, I don't remember which Russian animator, uh, Russian animator who made Hedgehog in, um, Hedgehog in the Fog. Anyone? All right. Oh, Yuri Norstein. That guy. What? Oh, no, I just, I just remember seeing it. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Everyone watch it. So Yuri Norstein is an amazing Russian animator. He makes, like, amazing um, 
stop motion and non stop motion stuff. Uh, I remember I, see, I saw an interview with him once and he said, uh, I, saw, I watched Disney and I thought it's magic. And then I started ma making animation and it's not magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. So yeah, so you get to that point, but, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, and I, I think I kind of uh, stuck with Flash because uh, while I was in the army, you kind of get sent to all kinds of courses if you want. So I was like, send me to a Flash course, I guess. So, uh, and, and I, I kind of fell in love with um, one hand, the simplicity of it uh, was kind of very easy to study, but also um, you could have kind of fi find your own voice in it and make something uh, very interesting uh, in it as well. Uh, and about um, four years ago, I think, I uh, uploaded uh, my first video to uh, YouTube. It was just kind of, I, I didn't, I knew what YouTube was, I didn't really know how big it was. and. Uh, I just continued from there, making um, mainly stuff that has to do with either fan culture or, or pop culture mashups because um, I'm really interested in intertextuality and how audiences react to a certain um, art form because a lot of what we see, I think, uh, in the last um, decade is um, reactionary uh, things. Not, not I'm not talking specifically about um, videos of folks reacting to art, but um, art that responds to parody, uh, mashups, stuff like that. And um, I love uh, things like that. I was, I, was, I was always interested in that. So yeah, that's sort of what I create around now, too. Yeah. Um, but I want to, what I want, what? What I want to ask is um, some of your creative influences or just um, how you got the ideas for, because uh, you have three, I, three main properties that I kind of follow on, on your channel, and that's obviously the gel live action. I, I just really like that. So, long story short, and she can probably explain this better than I am. It's just a, 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 a little girl. She's a scientist. She makes a, a device that's trying to do something else, but it brings another being from another dimension and they kind of work out how to get back to it. I, I, I really, I it's really like a that. live action mixed with animation. Yeah. I know I'm just super surprised because it's very different from everything else I do. We kind of tried going into live action with that. So yeah, so yeah. Well, that's where the charm comes from. And, and when you're watching everything else on your channel and then you see something that's different, right? Mm -hmm. Like these two gentlemen right here are starting to do the quests um, to get a new show, which is very different. Well, not very different, but it is different from everything else on your channel when you look at it as a whole, right? It's kind of you guys, you know, nose to the grindstone, trying to hash out something for you. Um, and when I seen the Joe live action, I kind of felt the same way. Then you also have your own cartoon uh, that you're trying to develop. It's Bella mm -hmm. yeah. and Tina. That would, a year ago. I oh, think yeah. we screened it here. Okay. Last year here. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think last year I was doing it. Yeah. No, this year, we, uh, this morning, we screened the, uh, the Stranger Things one. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, you have the uh, five stages of animated shorts. So mm -hmm. what I, my question is more so, like, when do you decide to do something else and kind of what pushes you to do it? Like, do you just get tired of what um, you're already doing or every, do you just want to explore? Yeah, everything I make um, is sort of, um, I don't decide one day, okay, I'm sick of all these stuff and I'm going to do something new because every every uh, single animation, we when I say we, it's me and my husband, we work together. I do animation, we write together. Uh, we don't kind of uh, think, okay, this thing succeeded, let's do something similar to that. It's obviously awesome when, you know, sites and everything pick, pick up your uh, previous mashup, but we won't mash up, I mean like, you know, the Frozen uh, and Orange is the New Black mashup. Uh, I won't rush to do another one if I don't feel uh, there's kind of a necessity to do that. Um, I, I, yesterday I talked to someone about that. Um, whenever we create stuff that reminisces and has to do with a certain show or TV or movie that we like, um, it usually comes from sort of, I call it breaking tension. Uh, you watch Game of Thrones and it's super tense and it's super dramatic and nothing really resolves because you know you have a TV show you need to keep it tense uh, but then you walk out of it and watching a parody that has to do with these specific very very dark very very dramatic characters do something really silly um, and kind of out of character, uh, kind of break, breaks that tension and makes you feel a little bit relieved, I think. It also says, it's also, you know, it also is, has a certain commentary and says something either about the show or either about um, the fan uh, base of that show. Uh, but I think it's mostly this, the 
kind of burn, burning feeling you have in your stomach of, oh, I, I need to respond to this. I need to do something that has to do with this. Um, so yeah, so I think it's also uh, true to the stuff that aren't specifically like the Valentina and like the gel one. Uh, oh, I have a really good idea. I want to tell this. Specifically gel, um, this it was a commissioned work. Uh, it, it was, we, I really wanted to tell something about failure because it's about this girl who um, tries to make one thing but ended up you know, bringing that character and she can't even bring him back up until a certain point when she succeeds. But still, that, that first um, device thing that she tried to make failed and she n never succeeded in making that again, but out of that she managed to make a, a friend with that you know, alienish uh, character that she brought. So we really wanted to tell something about um, the joys of failure, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I mean, when I, I guess, yeah, when I watched it, um, you know, I'm surrounded by monitors, a whole technology room, and all this <laughs> high-priced equipment, but I still get to those points to yeah. where, you know, she just throws herself in the bed, and she just can't believe in herself anymore. Um, and it's very easy uh, for people to kind of really on the outside to look in and see all this stuff, and, you know, you, you guys are so confident, and your work kind of speaks for itself, and it's, you know, nice and clean, but I do believe a lot of us may not get that low of a point, but we do hit those points to where, mm -hmm. ah, I mean, I can't do this or I failed. Um, but the good thing about failing is that you most likely will learn um, if you push yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. One last thing about your animation style. I mean, we talked about High Fidelity Flash. We talked about move, Windows Movie Maker over here. <laughs> um, I feel like your style is somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, just tell us yeah, about Yeah, I, I make, uh, like we, t we, we talked before, I'd make, I, I do use the puppet uh, animation, sometimes a little more. <laughs> I remember there's one animation, the Birdman parody, that I did that he walks at the end. And my, I remember my husband, I showed him like all the animation, and he walks eventually, and he's like, <gasps> because it's like super different. Walk is very difficult in animation, so walk cycle, so I just really don't do that. So I did do that in that video, and it was like, something is different, I can't tell what. So, so it was that. Uh, in, the, in the Peanuts one, I did use some um, frame by frame because it ha I, I, the most important thing about that is that it had to reminisce uh, the original. It had to. That was kind of the most important thing about uh, that style. So yeah, so I, I implement some uh, frame by frame if it's needed, but I mostly, I think, uh, try to, you know, like you said before, I try to um, find shortcuts and find uh, easier way to make stuff. Uh, but it's always nice to kind of have a new challenge. I think uh, in, in the Stranger Things one is, was um, the dance scene that they all dance, uh, you know, the, the peanuts kind of dance. And I was like, I'm not going to give someone else this. I'm going to give someone else this. Like while I was animating other stuff, and he was like, what about the dance, my husband? And I said, no, 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 this scene, I'm going to give someone else. Eventually I did it myself. <laughs> and it was because I was like, there's no time. I need to do that. And it, it, it was kind of fun. It was kind of a fun. Um, Challenge thing. I mean, obviously, it's nice when you have a reference uh, to kind of create around. But uh, but yeah, this, and I, I guess I use Flash. I edit with uh, Premiere, and I usually sketch. Yeah, it. James, there you yeah. go. <laughs> I edit with Premiere, and I do also, you know, if an, I do animate a bit with Premiere, only um, you know when there are moving backgrounds, like there's like the sh of you know everything moving aside, and I do move the backgrounds. And it's hard. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's, it's all the computer gets stuck when I do this. So I don't know how you do that. It's like, it's like my least favorite. I take a whole day for this just so I can kind of break stuff afterwards because it's so annoying. I mean, James just want that extra, like, yeah, it's extra hard. It's, it's, and it's I did it. It's harder than yeah. flash. It's like, and like, I know that how it should have ended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to get to questions in a bit. I just have one kind of like last overall question for the, our panelists here. What? you know, just flat out, like what kind of gets you guys up in the morning and put pen to the paper or pen to the screen, or in my case, my body in a suit covered in dots um, <laughs> in front of a bunch of cameras that know my every move in secret. Um, just starting with you guys. Uh, I think like uh, kind of motivation uh, it can be overrated, in, and I know that sounds like super weird and douchey, but let me unpack it. Um, like, you'll never be kind of inspired 
Uh, and uh, motivated was the wrong word. In inspiration, you'll never be inspired every single day. And this is a full-time job, right? So it's much better to try and build up a discipline as opposed to looking for inspiration every day. I agree. Because there are days, obviously, where you do, like I don't know, 14 hours just sitting at a desk, like slowly melting into an amorphous blob. And the only thing that's going to get you through that is good habits and good discipline. Um, so... In, in terms of like what gets you up in the morning, I think you know we're never going to make it in STEM. So it's either this or like Burger King. So you you kind of you kind of got your options, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean that's me at least. Yeah, I mean you just you just got to get somewhere. Um, and the I think the unique thing about art, especially when it comes to uh, schooling and stuff like this, I like to bitch about this on stream. So I apologize in advance for streams watching, um, but. If you want to go into any art field, the difference between an art field in school and something like STEM, like the, the hard sciences, the hard, like, knowledgeable things where you learn a set of facts and you know how to apply them, right, um, is it's really not something that someone else can just download into your brain. They can give you the techniques, the fundamentals, they, they can, like, guide your practice. But even if you go to trade school, you can't expect to go to the classes and then leave the classes and do nothing else and you'll be ready to get the job at the end of the day. It has to be something that you go at on your own time. And when you acknowledge that, it's kind of scary because it's like it's, it's a mountain of um, commitment to go after. Like You have to be committed and you're kind of staring into the void um, approaching something like this whereas you know if you, if you wanted to be like a uh, you said earlier you wanted to be a math teacher and you dropped out because you you know mm -hmm. your interest changed but in the case of being like a math teacher you would um there's probably a set number of things you need to learn you know and I'm, I'm sure there's like the tenacity and the charisma to eventually actually get the job to be a teacher but it's I think it's very different from being like an artist where your portfolio of your own original creations from your mind has to rise above everyone else's that's also submitting that portfolio and that isn't going to come from a set of rules that a teacher is going to give you that's invention on your level and um, there's no school in the world that has you sitting in a classroom enough hours to make that happen for yourself so it, it, it falls on you. Um, and I think just acknowledging that is what's been so important for us. You I just... think to like briefly build on that as well, like with the case of something like a math teacher, you're competing with the general people in your area of whatever the school is right for that right. job. If you're doing animation, you're not just competing with people in your area. You're not just competing with people in your country. You're competing with the globe because they can outsource it to Korea, India, like wherever they want to outsource animation. So you really have to rise above basically everyone because uh, you know, if your work is like even a little bit worse, they can find someone kind of in another country who'll do it cheaper. And that's, um, I think that's the most visceral and helpful image that I've kept in mind since we started this just journey, you know, with YouTube and everything. If you want to do this, if you want to do anything in art, but I mean, I guess you can technically apply it to any job, but it's, it's especially relevant to art fields, music, drawing, anything. You are competing for one seat but you're in a pool of dozens or scores of people that are competing for that one seat. So what can you do to guarantee that you've risen above everyone else and you're gonna get that seat at the end of the day? Because somewhere, someone else, I think it was like Arnie that said this in his like six rules motivational speech, it's, it's like a YouTube video, but um, he said, when you go out and party, when you go out and have fun for yourself, like that's important, it's important to lead a, like a balanced life, but when you're doing stuff that isn't put towards your craft, your skill, getting somewhere, there is someone else out there that's competing for the same position, the same job, the same dream, that's working in that moment when you're, you know, fucking around. Um, and so, so just to keep that image in mind, like just imagine the other guy that's also racing for the same finish line and only one of you can win. I think it's, uh, it's realistic. It sounds kind of crazy, but it's, it's, it's just the case and um, I think it's helpful. 
James? Okay, well, I'll keep my answer short, but um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> to, an- <laughs> <laughs> but to, to answer where do I get motivation, I think the first thing that you have to do is you have to like what you're doing, and you know, if that be you know stop motion or like doodles, that's great. You know, like do do what you love doing. Uh, if you want to get a career in animation, talk to these guys. But uh, if you want to just be on YouTube, then yeah, you know just <laughs> just uh, make make the videos that you're happy with and another thing that helps me get up in the morning is I can I I get a good feel with uh, how much I can get done in a day and so I'm always able to like schedule out like all right I need to do this this and this and this this and this and then I'll always know if I'm ahead of schedule or behind schedule and that will like make me just be organized really yeah Jason I mean, it's really fun. I think that's the main thing that gets you started. It's just really, I mean, when you, when you, when you catch onto something, when it catches, when you catch the, 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 onto the teeth of it and it starts moving, it's really fun because you can see like, oh, that's what I can do. And you only have it sometimes. Um, if, you go, if you look at any, and this is for anything, for, for directors, for, for writers, for animators, if you look at like Masaki Iwasa's early work or, or um, uh, Felix Colgrave or David O'Reilly, all these people, they, they started somewhere. And you can see from the beginning of their career to the most recent stuff they're putting out that it's really, really changed. And you are somewhere on that curve. You just have to keep putting the hours in. Um, you just got to keep doing it and, and hate your work into place. You absolutely have to. It's so healthy. Just hate the fuck out of your own work until eventually it starts to take shape. Um, and then it turns into something you like and, and, you know, you get there, I think. Cool. Ms. Lee? Well, I'm reminded of two things. First of all, yes, there is um, the hardship and the, the finish line. Uh, but there's also um, there's a lot of people out there that get to a certain success or whatever they defined as success uh, and it didn't take you know a whole lot of what you might consider talent or stamina but you know not only being the right place the right time but they had something different to offer Uh, a lot of time it isn't really a competition as much as it's different sort of creators that offer something very unique and something very of their own what you do is essentially a little different than something someone someone else makes and that's something I'm I keep reminding myself that that's sort of my sphere and what I have to offer might be not as good or other people might like like it so much but it's mine and I do have um, that kind of appreciation and something to offer this is me uh, the other thing I'm reminded of um, there's a story I read uh, about Guillermo del Toro um, I don't remember the name of the musician he works with there's a certain musician that a few decades ago, uh, created a sort of um, a certain album that didn't do well at all. Like it really failed. He lost a, m- a lot of money on it. About, on it. But Yamadil del Tomo, when he was young, uh, really liked that uh, CD. And when he was older and became uh, a creator like that, he took that musician to work with him because he liked so much that one failed CD he made. He liked so much um, that video you're talking about. It's something I kind of consider. Not a failure, but I didn't like it so much. It didn't do as well as, as I think it did. But then you come up and you're like, oh, it meant a lot to me. And I don't know, um, who, you never know who might have really loved that thing. You might consider a uh, failure to, to you guys, and it might be the next you know, huge director or something like that. And even if it might not be the next huge director, it might be someone that you, know, you, you made their day. So that's something that kind of makes me um, give me a lot of motivation like suddenly I'm hearing from someone oh this kind of made me go through a hard time or whatever so these two things mm, yeah it made them yeah that's not a, that's not a good uh, a right thing to say made them go th- help me overcome a hard time. overcome help me English is my second language guys <laughs> but um, it made me uh, overcome uh, so hardship great. cool um so first off can we get a round of applause for our awesome <laughs> So we have like we have like six minutes. I think we're just gonna shoot some questions until she kick us out. Yeah. Look at her waiting. She's waiting for me. <laughs> um, these we got 3D bunch of flash animation. This guy's using Premiere for some reason. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure one of us could answer a question no matter what it is. So don't ask me a question. I don't have a mic. <laughs> That guy. <laughs> oh, there you go. 
<laughs> hey guys. What's up, uh, man? Hey. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Um, so I I kind of have a, a question for. For, for y'all and for you, so you might have to share the mic, um, or I can hand it back. Um, but uh, my main my main question is: so when it comes to setting up your characters within y'all separate like animation software, when you when you rig it or when you're setting up like the skeletal system for it, like are y'all just mainly working in like symbols like within symbols within symbols, or and do you like use some sort of like anim? picker or like do you have like a simple layout for like how you how you animate stuff probably in in Maya blender Maya um, I use max which goes okay. back to like the picker program that you're comfortable with because Maya is definitely the standard like in just 3d animation in general but I use max which is not really which is not a slouch it's just different sure. and it's not really known for it um, really I'm just gonna shoot my answer really quick um, I just use, I bond models to a skeleton and okay. I move them around in 3D space and I pretty much record that per frame. It's the same principles, you know, that old Disney print an principles of animation. I mean, that goes for any type of animation. Uh, I just do it in a 3D space and then I can obviously use, I'm pretty sure you all seen mocap. I get in the suit, put the dots on me and I can also record and I get some good in-betweens with that but I still have to go through, get key poses, okay. go through the tweening phase and clean it all up. Yeah. Cool. I, I, I don't know anything about, <laughs> yeah. Um, with, with the puppet animation in Flash 2, 2D versus 3D, we, we do set up puppet rigs so the, the individual parts are like refined works of art and then um, because it's a symbol, you can sort of simulate the skeleton he was talking about if you select multiple pieces of the body part and then um, set the uh, rotation point to different points and like sort of selectively deselect things so that you can bend things and it all sort of moves together. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll stick around for a minute after the panel, though, if you want to talk about it more, because we do have to move on and get some more questions before they kick us out. Hello? Hi. So, uh, this is mostly towards James, but I guess uh, uh, it applies to all of you guys. So, have you ever tr wanted or tried to, like, mm. completely diverge from your preferred style of animation, like, just way out there and stuff? Mm. And if you have, how did it go? No, I have, I'm really, like, I stick to the what I, you know, the little bubble characters, right? That's usually what I like doing, so I haven't really explored too much stuff, and I haven't really been, like, I don't have the need to really do that because I like where it is right now. Uh, I would say that for some times I, I, I did made a video on a movie review, which was very different than what I normally do, which was a lot of fun, so not really, <laughs> to answer your question. Do you guys, do you guys have any answer to that? Or, no. <laughs> I, I've, I've always liked stop motion. I did stop motion when I was a kid, and I always thought it would be cool to do something uh, yeah. like that, but it hasn't come up yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What is the hardest um, thing in animation? Uh, just like not getting discouraged mm -hmm. because it is like a very tedious job a lot of the time. So uh, when it comes out, it's like, oh, it's awesome, it's so good, or maybe you hate it. But that also <laughs> happens. But like just the process is very time consuming, very, yeah. your scenery doesn't change, you're very still. So mm -hmm. literally just kind of having the again discipline to stick through it that's the hardest part i think i think for me loneliness you just sit, <laughs> sit a lot in front of yeah it's just it's you in front of the of the computer for long hours and you, you're just like you want to go out you just mm -hmm. sometimes it just i just ask my husband just sit here mm -hmm. just just be next to me and talk about things it's just so, so this that that for me Uh, so I got just a quick question for I think Don. You said yeah. you, uh, you said you had the stick figure animator when you were younger. Yes, yeah. When I was was when the, I first started out. Was it called Pivot? <laughs> no, no, no. I did use Pivot. I did use Pivot. Yeah, I, I had a four end Pivot. But you know, I, I sort of learned Flash. Like I began to learn Flash um, with stick figure animation. Pivot is perfectly acceptable for stick. Like I've seen some amazing stuff with it. I wouldn't like. 
you know, sneer at it. But um, if you want to move on to something more complicated, you should start with software that will eventually take you to something more complicated, you know. Yeah, because I Pivot was one of the ones I like started messing with when I was like a lot younger, right? And so I just didn't know if it was the same one. Yeah, no, no, I definitely, you know, I messed with it. Um, and again, like what I was proud enough about before, you can get to the fundamentals with Pivot just by virtue of it being an animation program. So to be making stick figures, doing things, um, you can follow the same fundamentals that will apply to the more complicated stuff if that's where you want to start out. It's a cool program. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a mean question or not, but do you guys ever reuse like scenes or animations to cut corners, like redraw over it or stuff like that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, 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 say. Like, I know classic Disney did that a lot. So do you guys do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've we've got an explosion that's been in every cartoon we've ever made. <laughs> you can you can just like look through it, look for the same explosion. It took about seven hours to make for Races Mario, and it you know it, it sort of adapts well to the other styles. So I've just dropped it in, and nobody's noticed yet. <laughs> if I'm gonna, you know, I, I'll get up at four in the morning and have a mocap session, which is usually by myself which is me creating choreography, cleaning up choreography, recording it, and editing it and using it, I'm gonna use that in like seven more videos, and you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna see that same kick or punch or whatever on anything from a regular standing guy to Godzilla doing the same thing. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I think, especially when you're crunching deadlines and making kind of similar yeah. stuff, I mean, that kind of helps you, like she said, animation takes a ridiculous amount of time, but like when you make, sometimes when you make one system or one thing, it, it's actually pretty good to where you can kind of use it in multiple occasions. That's like those aha moments, like, ah, I can, I can use this for the next five projects, so. Is that okay? Yeah, I guess that's, yeah. Um, I, can, I think that's everything. One more time, round of applause for our lovely panel. Thank you, guys. Um, Um, I, this, I propose this panel because, again, these are things that I think about, especially the gel. I hate to keep bringing it up. The gel video <laughs> definitely reminded me. Of, these are things that I think about, and I know these are things that other artists want to know. And so the first time we put on this panel, hopefully it'll be here next year, and we can answer some more of your questions. I'm going to let these plug some stuff. Here you go. Thanks. Uh, we have a panel today at 4.30 uh, in room 10, level 3. Uh, we're going to show you some of like, the cartoons we're kind of working on that aren't on YouTube at the moment. Um, and yeah, please come along. Don't, don't, don't let us look like losers, please. <laughs> so, well, I have a panel with Tony V. Tunes tomorrow at Sunday. How's it going? Yeah. I, forgot where, I forgot what room number it's in, but it's at 4 p.m. Um, Lee and I are on the So You Want to Be a Director that's panel. A, that's the one, isn't it? Is it? No. Yeah? No, it's just no, it's something else. I'm, yeah. I'm in the right panel. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so 10 a.m. tomorrow, the two of us are going to yeah. tell you how to be a director. Yeah, so that. Uh, and if you want to watch the one, the, the animation with Jelly was talking about, it's called Earworm uh, by Only Lee on YouTube. So that's it. Okay. And I have well, some more stuff there. That's it for us. I hope you guys have a great RTX. Thank you. Thank you.